Good morning from Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm Raya. And I'm Louis. We spent the first four years of our relationship traveling the world full time and now we're back on the road. We're pausing our road trip through the US down to Costa Rica and we're taking on Europe for the summer. After reuniting with Louis' family in the UK, we bought a van to drive down through France and Italy and across to Bulgaria to visit my family. We're vlogging almost every day of our trip. Subscribe so you don't miss any of it. So we've just arrived in Sarajevo. We're in the old town. We're gonna go and try and find some lunch. Raya found like a vegan spot nearby. We're gonna go check that out. And then we're just gonna have a little tour around, do some sightseeing. We've arrived for some lunch. Yes, table for two. Yes. Zara <laughs> yes. is two Vara. We have found a restaurant for lunch that has vegan options and apparently it's traditional Bosnian food. So I'm super excited. First up, we got some nettle juice, fresh. Is it interesting? Is it good? It's really good. Yeah, I really like it. Mm. And there's tons of health benefits too. Ooh, I like that. Okay, mm -hmm. I might get some. This salad. I mean, I'm excited about all of this, but now that we're in this part of the world, like the food is getting very similar to Bulgarian and the salads, I don't know what it is about them, it's just like the freshest vegetables and oh my gosh, I'm just, it feels like I'm almost home. Like everything about it, the houses and the food and, and the language, like it's the closer we get to Bulgaria, it's obviously like the closer it is to the culture and I'm just so excited to be here. Me too. Yeah, check this out. This is a vegan stew. These are stuffed vegetables, potatoes, and tomato salad. So we just finished lunch. It was amazing. So, so good. Would definitely recommend this. Mm. And now we are gonna go and try and find a walking tour because every website we've read, every vlog we've watched, Everyone recommends doing a walking tour around the old town and the centre of the city, so that's what we're going to do. We have found a walking tour. This is our guide, Kiki. Hello. She's going to take us around, show us some of the sights, talk about some of the history, and uh, yeah, we're going to take you guys along with us and share what we learn. I was just asking um, if there's still quite a divide here between like the different religions, different groups. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, the city is pretty divided, unfortunately. Uh, before the war, we had a 46% of the mixed marriage. So it was completely normal to be with the law with someone who is different than you. And nowadays, there is no. So, so there's still a lot of division. Yeah. So yeah. people fall in love that are from different backgrounds. They would like maybe their family would not like it. Or, yes. Yeah. For, especially you know, older generations are the ones who are blocking. Yeah. Yeah. But as well, I, I believe in next gener in generation in generations who are coming after us, mm -hmm. it will be much better. In a communist regime, there is no religion, as you know. There is no practice. Yeah. So. My grandma, she was really religious person. And she was praying in another room. Fa grandfather in another room was uh, saying, or like, please don't stop that. If police see us, they will, you know, arrest us and things like that. But again, my parents, my mother in this case, she has a, she has a freedom to her friend be Serbs, to be a Catholic, to be Croat, whoever, doesn't matter. Even to be in law. Because my background, it's a big mix. If you are wondering how to recognize locals, just pay attention at the coffee shops. Mm -hmm. You'll see locals drinking coffee for the entire day. If you are wondering why we are not the members of the European Union, we don't have a time. Who will drink the coffee? <laughs> you know, ritual of the city is to drink a coffee three times per day. Mm -hmm. In the morning, mid part of the day and even evening. Mm -hmm. I like so. that. I like that tradition. <laughs> Pretty good I one. enjoy coffee. I enjoy yes, coffee. Yes, very Can well. I try some? Uh, actually, yes, there is a coffee shop here. He does this every day. Really? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> my grandma, you should. I should meet you with my grandma. She do say. So this is copper. Copper, pure copper, you know. And then I buy copper like. Uh, one meter with the two meter, that you know. Oh, cool. and then cut to the size 
it depends what I need, like a nice. plate, coffee pot, whatever. And then with these tools, I make different kind, different ornaments. Every piece, it's really unique. This is like a coffee pot. And then, when I finish complete this design, I doing like that. And heat and the lead melts out. Lead comes liquid. Lead comes out. Because it's got a lower melting point than the copper. Ah, yes. oh, perfect. I am gonna try Bosnian coffee for the first time. I'm actually very excited. I've had Turkish coffee before. I've had Arabic coffee. I haven't had Bosnian coffee, so let's see if it's any different. Apparently, it's very sugary. Probably not a good thing to drink every day. So we do like this to mix. Okay, uh -huh. very good. Yes, you see. And that is all. Your coffee is ready to drink. Have a cube. You put the cube in? Okay. Well, you can put it in your mouth or you can put like this. What's, the, what's the Bosnian way in your mouth? Both. Also, we can do like this. I'll do just this. Wow. Drink. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so you just dip it in and then yes. you just bite a straight up sugar cube. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mmm. <laughs> delicious combination. It is what a delicious think? combination. <laughs> How many uh, people here have diabetes? Every second person. Every second person. Wow. And always when you want to drink coffee, you should bite. Mm -hmm. By the sugar. Yeah. Every, wow, every sip of coffee is a bite of sugar. Yes. <laughs> Some of them practice drink coffee like that. Do people have more than one sugar cube per coffee or just one? Well, if they're normal, they have. If they're crazy, they don't have. They have more. <laughs> but don't do <for> this. <laughs> it's good coffee. It's good coffee. All right, thumbs up to Bosnian coffee. Yes. <laughs>
he was assassinated, which Austria blamed Serbia for, and that triggered the First World War. So this is a very significant point in Europe. So I'm sitting in a replica of the car that the Duke was assassinated in. This is the spot right here where the assassination happened. So when I was growing up, when I was like 10 or 11, the Bosnian War was kicking off. And I really first heard of Sarajevo because of that. It was always in the news and it was under siege. And I think Yugoslavia was in the process of breaking up after the USSR and everything, communism was falling. And from what I understand, Serbia was attacking Bosnia and there was a power struggle, there was a fight. Um, a lot of people living in Sarajevo were Serbian and there was, yeah, just a, a war broke out for like, I think like three years, four years. And this was crazy. This was a completely war-torn city. I think the whole country was war-torn. So it's amazing to be here now and seeing what it's become and its road to recovery. And Kiki was saying it still has a long way to go to fully recover, but it's been amazing just learning about it. Can I ask you about the Bosnian war in the 90s? But did you have Please, friends yeah. that stayed here during the siege? Yes. Yes. My number one friend he destroyed granite, he destroyed his leg. Oh wow. And he go to Italy, they help him to leg. Because local doctor said we must cut both legs. On Markale, on Markale from, from a bomb? Bomb. And Italian government is organized a helicopter. Wow. And transport my friend to Torino. In Torino, he stayed two and a half years in hospital, and today he plays football. Wow! Huh. Did you prefer life before, during Yugoslavia, before the war, or now? I'm longer live in, in Yugoslavia than after Yugoslavia. You preferred it back then? I prefer this time. Wow. Why? Because everybody has the job, everybody has money, Every Niko nije imao problema ni sa čim. Like people didn't have Mirno. issues. Wow. As as today is saying like Kogod kaže da u socijalizmu nije valjalo laže. He's saying whoever says whoever says like in socialist regime like we didn't you, you, we, we didn't live good he's lying. Oh wow, these these are bullet holes. How much of the city was destroyed during the Bosnian War? Well, the city was pretty destroyed. Did Serbia succeed in invading Sarajevo? Was it, did it become under Serbian rule? Yeah. It didn't? So Bosnia defended Sarajevo. Yeah. And it, the war went on for four years? Yes, after the four years ended up and now it's the same city as before the war. And there was a treaty, the treaty was signed in Dayton in yes. Ohio. So, wow. as you see, the same city before the war. Multicultural, multi religion, multi ethnic. So, we are arriving now at the Museum of Crimes Against Humanity. Museum of Crimes Against Humanity and Genocide. And we're going to learn more about the Bosnian War. briefly got to look around the museum and honestly I couldn't film most of what we saw because it was so heartbreaking and gruesome and it's reality it happened we do live in a world where there was atrocities that happened and that's part of history 
Um, I think it's hard to grasp how recently this happened in my lifetime. And yeah, I just, uh, I understand why a lot of people probably don't want to talk about it. To be honest, it's probably impacted so many people in such a negative way. Um, but yeah, it's amazing to see how this city's recovered. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. My heart goes out to the people and lives that were lost during the war. And uh, I really hope as, as a global community, as humanity, we can avoid wars and death of this scale in the future. Okay, let me give you an update. So we've decided to book a full day tour tomorrow with Meet Bosnia because basically we were like we were asking where we should go and they gave us a list of all the things and um, we were just gonna drive with our van but you know our air conditioning isn't working and also there's just something about going places with locals and hearing their stories like we could have walked around Sarajevo alone today and it would have been like 10% as good as having a guide so we decided to leave the van for the day and go on this full day tour but anyway, we were asking Kiki, where do you think we can park our van to, you know, somewhere safe? And she has basically invited us to stay at her family house. And there's a like paid safe parking lot around the corner. Um, so we're going to go there tonight, leave our van and then stay at her place. And this is just the magic of travel is meeting locals and um, yeah, getting to stay with them. And yeah, this is Bal Balkan <laughs> hospitality. 100%. <laughs> yes. So, but first, we're about to go and meet her dad who's gonna like show us the parking lot and stuff. But first, we need to get some dinner. So they're taking us to get some falafel and then we're gonna go back. It's like a whole thing, but I'm very excited. <laughs> Did you ask? I asked if they had Wi-Fi at her house. She's like, of course, how would we live without Wi-Fi? <laughs> we are following one of Kiki's friends who is taking us to the parking lot in the house. <laughs> this is such a crazy adventure, I love it. It's so like, good. The fact that we're staying with a local Bosnian, like her parents, yeah. like, this is so good. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, thank you. Welcome to where we're staying tonight. Um, this is so sweet. Basically this is Kiki's like house that she grew up in and this is her little apartment that's a part of the house but she's moved out now she lives with her husband so she's let us stay here and there's two single beds but her dad was saying that Louis would likely not fit on there so I think this extends out we'll figure that out in a minute um we have a really cute little kitchen sink everything and then of course the most exciting thing we can take a shower and we have a toilet oh this is so good so good I and forgot that we didn't have a toilet for a second <laughs> yeah so this is gonna be perfect. And then we're gonna be up bright and early tomorrow for a full tour of Bosnia and Herzegovina. See you in the morning. <laughs> bright and early. Good morning. We woke up bright and early this morning to do a full day tour. We left Sarajevo and we are on our way down to Mostar and we have quite a lot of stops along the way. We just made it to Konyets and we are on the bridge right now. This is probably one of the biggest attractions here. This is a beautiful town you can see behind me. Um, but again, like the rest of Bosnia, there's a lot of culture and history here. So this bridge was built in the 15th or 16th century. I can't remember, but it has been destroyed twice once in the second world war as the nazis were fleeing this area they bombed it and then secondly in the bosnian war it was partially destroyed and they had to rebuild it it's just so beautiful again there's so many reminders in this country of resilience and people here have been through so much throughout the years and especially like recent years as well and i don't know it's just incredible to see that the optimism and hope that you can see physically in the places that are rebuilt and in the people here as well. This is definitely the earliest morning we've done on this trip so far, but it's good. We're gonna have a long productive day. Haven't had my morning coffee yet, so we just stopped into this little cafe gonna get one before we hit the road again. So 
we've arrived in Kravitsa waterfalls, right in the southern border near Croatia. It is like 40 degrees Celsius right now. So we're probably gonna go for a swim. Yeah, sure. We've heard we can swim in the waterfalls. Woo! So this is where we were yesterday, Sarajevo. We've driven all the way down past Mostar, down to here. We are very close to the coast here. This is the Croatian border. Yeah, look. Put our bag on the side, got my swimming shorts on, and I'm about to go into this cool, fresh water. So clear. I actually grabbed one of our masks so I can swim around and look at the fish. This is amazing. There's so many people that are walking all the way down and not coming in the water. I would very highly recommend bringing a bathing suit, jumping in, I think these may be some of the coolest waterfalls I've ever experienced. Mind blowing. This place is amazing. I'm gonna go up to the top of the tower. Oh, this is crazy. You can see me. Whoa. Someone was just telling me that with a lot of these stone buildings, really old stone buildings, there would have obviously been floors made out of wood, but that wood is rotted or burnt away, so you only get the stone left, but you can imagine where the floors would have been and what the interior would have looked like. I love history, this is so crazy. I was also learning that these, uh, these types of arches where you get a support rock in the middle that support these these rocks they're kind of like leaning in this was a type of architecture that was introduced into the middle east during the crusades in the 1100s so most of the buildings in that area were smaller they didn't have big arches but anything after that um, this building technique was adopted what are you up to over here just found a little spot oh this is pretty best view Before we stop for lunch, we have just arrived at another location. I don't know anything about this, but it looks pretty beautiful. It's a huge cliff. We are on our way now to see a dervish monastery that was built 600 years ago. And I've seen so many photos of this. It's like built into the mountains with 
a cave and beautiful water running and I mean you're gonna see it in a second but it's so beautiful and I've been waiting to see this for years ever since I first saw photos of it so I'm really excited. So this place was built in 1520 as a monastery for the dervish and you may have heard of the whirling dervish but it's a type of Islamic worship where they spin and they dance as a worship to God. And apparently when the guy first came here who built this monastery and founded it, he had to cross the river with his horse and they swam across the river and then decided to build the monastery here. But this is so, so epic. We just sat down for lunch at this beautiful location by the river and to be honest, we are very hungry because um, apparently Bosnians only eat two meals, so breakfast and then a late lunch which keeps them full throughout the night. Um, we did not know that, so we didn't really eat breakfast. And it's already 5 p.m. And it's 5 p.m. <laughs> I'm hungry. We may have over-ordered a little bit, but we'll see. We just got a bunch of salads. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look how epic this location is for a restaurant on the river. It's yeah. so good. You can see the cave right there. And you can even feel there's like cold gusts of wind coming from the cave and it almost feels like an air conditioner or something. It's like just really cold air coming out of nowhere, which feels so good. You can literally see the fish swimming in the river next to us. Look how big they are. Round one, we're starting with a bunch of salads. Oh, there's just, like we said it a million times, nothing beats fresh vegetables this time of year. This is just cucumber tomato, some cabbage and tomato, and boiled potatoes. Oh my god. We definitely over ordered. Oh my goodness. That looks amazing. This looks so good. This is the old bridge behind us. We don't know anything about it yet, but when we get to it, our tour guide is gonna tell us the history. We are walking to the old bridge now. Something I've noticed immediately is there's loads of kind of mountains surrounding and the, the city's in kind of a valley. So I just love looking up at these cliffs. Any cities that have mountains right there next to them, love them. Something else, we were talking to some locals at lunch or dinner, I don't know, and they were saying that Mostar actually gets really hot. It's one of the like hottest towns here. So yeah, they were like definitely wait until later on to come and it's about 7 p.m. now and it's, it's a pretty good temperature, it's, so. It's like still in its mid 30s yeah. now, but apparently it was like 40 degrees. Yeah. Honestly, this trip has made us think about the time of year that's ideal to visit Southern and Eastern yeah. Europe. And I don't think August is the ideal month. No, we I definitely I feel like that. we would come in spring if we were to do it again. 100%, or I think May, June and September are the best times to do Europe, Southern Europe. But anyway, um, if you do come to Mostar and you do come in the summer like this, come later in the day and it'll be much better. So all of these holes in this building are bullet holes? Yeah. Whoa. Or a grenade drops and it ricochets mm -hmm. into the building and it leaves these marks. Yeah. Like the small metal parts mm -hmm. from the from the grenade. And it, it doesn't like just hit the ground, it like destroys the ground. It just yeah. like explodes. Yeah. Did you have um did you have family that were here during the Bosnian War? What was their experience like? Yeah, my father was a soldier. Wow. Yeah, he was on the front lines. So he was fighting against the Serbian forces? Yeah, definitely. Wow. But Mostar had different problems. <laughs> they had problem with the Croatian Oi. army. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they had problem with the Croatian armies as well. Wow. They were shooting like those were the front lines as well. So Serbia was invading from the north from and, and Croatia oh. was... Invading from the south. Croatia was like a silent killer. Whoa. In a way. So that was kind of we're being attacked both sides. Hmm. And is it similar? Kiki was saying yesterday that because of the mountains, like they were the disadvantage of Sarajevo, that 
the other soldiers could be up there and like shooting down. Yeah, is a similar yeah, thing yeah. They here? had much more. Yeah. Uh, they had much more equipment yeah. than Bosnian soldiers. Okay. Because uh, before the war, uh, Bosnia had an embargo. That's like for, yeah. for uh, forbidding for weapons to enter the country yeah. itself. So that's kind of caused a much more problem. And uh, soldiers were using uh, guns from World War Two. So they did not, there was like one gun and three soldiers. Wow. So if somebody dies, you just grab the gun and give it to another yeah. soldier. Crazy. In Bulgarian, most means bridge. Yes. Is it the same? Yeah. Is that why most are? Yes. Most there you star. go. <laughs> star, star basically means old. Yeah, same old Bulgarian. bridge. Yeah. Starting most. Exact same most thing. Most, start. Basically, yeah. it's like a old word bridge. game. Yeah. <laughs> As we're walking through the square, it really feels like there's a lot of like Turkish Middle Eastern influence left over from the Ottoman Empire that ruled here for about 400 years. And it's super interesting for me because I'm from Bulgaria and Bulgaria is right next to Turkey and we were also under Ottoman rule for many, many years. However, it really doesn't feel like that in Bulgaria. Like here, honestly, we're walking through the market, we're like, it almost feels like we're in Istanbul or something. But Bulgaria doesn't really have that same kind of um, Ottoman influence. So it's super interesting. Even though we're closer, um, we don't have that. And then, of course, there's so many Muslims living here, again, left over from that time. And it's not the same in Bulgaria. We just learned that the old bridge was untouched during World War I and World War II. But in the Bosnian war, the Croatian forces bombed this bridge and the whole middle collapsed into the river and it devastated the whole town because obviously this is like what the town's named after, it's super famous. And after the war was over, they raised funds, people donated from all around the world and they rebuilt the bridge. And these parts of rock here are parts of the original bridge that fell down when it was bombed. World's slipperiest <laughs> stone. This is crazy. That was the bridge when it was destroyed. Okay, what's happened, Raya? My shoe completely broke and has been broken for like half the day. But it's literally on its last legs. No, that's beyond its last legs. <laughs> that so has no I legs. I just bought some flip-flops to last me. We learned earlier that this mini bridge behind me was like a practice bridge before they built the big one. So this was just built first, I think a couple of years before, just to test it out. And uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty similar replica in terms of how they built it, but obviously just miniaturized. The heavens are opening. You know when you have a really, really hot, humid day and then it just, rains in the evening and like gets rid of all that humidity that's what's happening right now and i think it's just about to go crazy we're just trying to find the uh the van to drive back to sarajevo We are back in the van. We haven't seen you in a couple hours. Basically, we ended the tour. We drove all the way back from Mostar to Sarajevo, and then we got our stuff from the apartment we were staying, and we quickly jumped into the van, and we are on our way to the next destination. Um, but I just wanted to end this vlog by saying we were blown away by how beautiful this country is, and the people, and food, and um, 
I'm just so happy to be in this part of Europe and I just cannot wait to explore so much more. And we will link the tour that we did down below if you want to come here and check it out. We definitely highly recommend. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. <laughs>